In this episode of Project 380, I'm going to be replacing the valve cover gasket on a VVT model. Over time, the valve cover gaskets do deteriorate and start leaking. Typically, the valve cover likes to leak around the back here. If you can see on camera, that has started to drip. And just behind the timing cover down here, these are telltale signs that you need your gasket changed. Doing the valve cover gasket on the VVT model is a little bit different as you've got a few extra components. If you have got a strut brace, that is gonna have to be removed first. Then remove the PCV valve breather tube. When removing this, check the damage. There's cracks in this one, so that's gonna to have to be replaced. This can cause idling issues and revving issues. So these cracks can suck in air, and because this system is after the throttle body and the mass airflow, unmetered air is gonna enter the system and cause all sorts of issues. Remove the cam sensor wire. On the VVT model, it's at the back of the head. Then disconnect the VVT solenoid. Disconnect the pre-cat O2 sensor. Remove this bracket that holds the wire and the harness onto the valve cover. Next to be removed is the VVT oil feed. Now that's a 19 mil banjo bolt. These can be incredibly tight. And be careful, there is a copper washer either side of the oil feed. When you pull the banjo belt out, make sure you've got one copper washer. Pull the feed back slightly and retrieve the other copper washer. So now for the valve cover box. There's 11 in total. Start from the middle, go to the front, and round the outside in an anti-clockwise pattern. Just crack them all loose first and then fully remove them. Compared to the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 valve cover, the VVT model is a little bit more difficult to remove. Because you've got the VVT system on here, there's a couple of O-rings on the VVT system that cause a little bit of suction. This does take a bit more leverage to remove the valve cover. When you're removing this, try and pull it straight up. This is going to allow this to come off the VVT a lot easier. So when we're talking about VVT, we're actually talking about this part of the intake cam. As you can see, it's slightly different to the exhaust cam. There's a unit on the front here and a solenoid here. The solenoid controls the amount of oil that goes to this part of the cam, which adjusts the advance and retard of this cam timing. By advancing and retarding the timing, we can actually gain more power in a certain rev range. Apart from the fact that the valve cover gasket deteriorates and goes brittle over time, another cause of the oil leak issues is down here beside each one of the cams at the front and at the back here and here. A little bit of sealant needs to go in these corners to make a perfect seal. But sometimes there is old sealant left in there and the oil leaks out past it. So what we're going to do now is clean this whole mating surface of the head and the valve cover itself, renew the sealant, put a new gasket in and put it all back together. So what we're using here is a plastic blade on a scraper. Gonna get rid of all that old sealant and the plastic scraper is gonna make sure we don't damage the mating surface. 
So as we're doing this, we're trying to make sure we don't put any debris into the head. Once all the old sealant is off, it's then time to put a bit of brake cleaner on a rag and get rid of any residue. Now for the rocker cover itself, we're gonna rip the old gasket out. And clean where the gasket goes with some brake cleaner and a rag. Once that's all dry and evaporated, you can go and install a nice fresh new gasket. Make sure the gasket's firmly in place and the valve cover is ready to go on the car. Before replacing the valve cover, it's a good idea to put some silicon sealant in these corners here, either side of the cams and at the back. You just want a good blob of it in each corner. Don't go too excessive as it will push into the head. Now these need to be torqued down to eight newton meters, starting from the center, moving to the front, and then spiraling in an anti-clockwise pattern. Then you need to put the banjo bolt for the BBT oil supply back in. When you're doing this, make sure you're using two nice new copper washers. This needs to be torqued down to 40 newton meters. The rest of the procedure is exactly the same, but in reverse. Thank you to Caspar the Ballet and Vinyl for lending me their bay. Thank you to my good friend Robbie for lending me his car for the weekend and giving me a helping hand. If this video did help you in any way, leave it down in the comments below and leave us a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one.